What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. A little bit change of scenery today with our boy Mariano. Gotta have your poker boyfriend pick you up from the airport and go straight to the casino and knock out a session. So we'll see how it goes. Are you vlogging this one? I no promises. All right, all right. Well, hopefully he does. We'll see. We'll try to mix it up with them anyways. But uh, outside the Hustler, gonna try to hop into the 510 that's running, maybe in the 55. Meanwhile, before waiting for a seat, but uh, we'll see how the action is like on a Monday afternoon. Hopefully you enjoy the vlog. A little LA trip before we go to Austin, Texas. Let's run it up. Time out, time out. Whatever you're doing right now, let's just stop for a second because it's time to raid. That's right, with Raid Shadow Legends, there are endless opportunities, whether it's climbing the Doom Tower, leveling up your champions, or battling against one of the millions of online real players in the arena. Use my links down below to download Raid yourself on your mobile phone or PC. On top of all that, they have a huge variety of bosses to fight too. One of the most challenging but rewarding bosses to fight right now is the Guardian of the Void Keep, Malik Kavar. I mean, just look at him. His badass sword and abilities mean business. He is just one of the many bosses you can fight, and they're all challenging in their own unique ways. For example, there's Astronix, the Dark Fae, and Bommel the Deadhorn, part of the brand new Doom Tower update. There's tons of new rooms and missions to discover, and if that's all not enough, they're releasing one very special event with a brand new feature, Super Raids. Super Raids let you double up your rewards from hitting dungeons and massively speeding up your progress. This is amazing for new players, and if there's ever a time to start playing, it's right now. You don't want to miss out on this. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, hit the link in the description or scan my QR code on screen, You'll get tons of rewards, including an epic hero, Chinaru, and all your treasure will be waiting for you here on the top right corner. I'll see you in game, and big thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. We're starting things off here at the 5-5 game at the Hustler, and one of the first hands we're playing seven-handed here. We've got Jack Knight of Diamonds in the hijack, and there's an under the gun player who limps. Played my right, our buddy Mariano raises it up to $25 in the low jack. Here, in position of them, certainly could 3-bet sometimes, but I think we're just going to flat make the call, see a flop. That entices the small blind and under the gun player to call as well. So, multi-way starting things off with the flop of 9982 spades. All things considered, with trips, it's a pretty good flop for us, and when action checks to me, definitely going to start with a bet, and I size to $35.00. Mainly only going to get called by draws, and we get the ungun player and Mariano to come along with a call. When the turn comes, a queen spade does not get there. Action checks to me once again, and I'm going to size up now. Although we do lose to hands like Jack-10, having blocked Jack-10 a little bit here, I think our hand's just going to be good a lot of the time. We can get more value from spades or queen X holdings. So I size up to $165. The only gun player folds, and now Mariano does come along with a call. So let's go to a river, which comes another queen. Pretty gross card for us, and he checks to me. In my head, it just doesn't seem like a spot to go for value, considering there's not a whole lot that can call me. All pairs of eights have now downgraded, and pretty much just targeting a hand like ace high to hero call, or if he somehow did check back a hand like pocket tens or jacks in this way, that would be... I guess the only hands we get value from so i just check this one back seems like the only hands that can call would be a chop or beat me if we bet and get raised then it's a horrible situation as well so just trying to avoid that i check it back and good thing we did because mariano shows us the ace queen of spades nice hand nice to get there in a very disguised runner runner top full house but we avoid the situation by just checking Second interesting spot with King 10 of spades in the hijack. There is a low jack open to 20. Once again, I'm just going to make the call. And now the player on my left, he decides to three bet to $60. He's got about $2,000 in his stack. Action folds to me and facing a relatively small three bet. Although we're out of position, this hand is pretty playable and we're going to see a flop for this price. I call for 40 more and the flop comes 10, 8, 4, 2 spades. Really great flop for us, top pair and the spade draw. I'm going to play in flow and check to him, and surprisingly, he just checked this back, unfortunately. So off to a turn, which comes a five, a total brick here, and I'm going to lead out for $100 now. 
In hindsight, I think this bet is just a little too big as it pretty much just forces only better hands to call me at this point, but he does make the call here, so not feeling great about it. Definitely looking to improve. When the river is the nine of clubs, we don't improve. We've got a marginal top pair on a very connected board now. I just check unimproved to him and he checks back and he shows us pocket jacks. Seems like we're just running into it. I definitely could have lost less by betting smaller on the turn, but as played, whatever. We definitely could have lost less. So we played 5-5 for one hour. Didn't go great as we were in the game for 1500 out for 935 but hoping to claw out of our $900 hole into this 510 game. Let's try to run it up. One of the first hands here at the 510, we pick up the premium pocket fours. You know we love this hand. We're on the button as well. There's an ungun and hijack player who limps. I'm going to make the limpy poos and call for $10 as well. And now onto the small blind player who raises it up to $70. Pretty large raise, but as expected, he would do so out of position. Now, the only player who limped, who I've seen him play almost any two, makes the call. Hijack, who limp calls as well, and we're never folding. Let's see a flop with this one, I call. Off to a flop multi-way, which comes 996 to clubs. When the small blind actually first act checks, seems like he has a holding that missed, like ace-king or some high cards. Under the gun player now throws out a bet of $75. I've seen this specific player literally play every hand since I've sat down, and he bets often, so seems like he's bluffing a lot. The hijack folds, but I don't think this is a great candidate to bluff catch with, although we do have a player behind in the small blind. I don't know. I just don't think that this player can have it every single time when he's betting every single hand he plays, so I decide on just making the call in position. Small blind luckily folds. We're off to a turn heads up, which comes the ace of hearts. So not amazing as his ace high flush draws now beat us. Once again, he throws out a bet of 135. And now, like I said, we don't have the best bluff catcher in the world as we rarely will improve and facing more aggression, we're just gonna be forced to fold. So it is what it is. Too many hands beat us. Gonna believe him this time. Pocket fours goes down in flames as we let this card go. In the next interesting spot with 10-8 of diamonds, we're on the Unleon straddle and it's a five-way limped pot. Four of the players put 20 in the middle. I check my option. We're going to a flop multi-way, which comes queen, queen, six, two hearts, and a diamond. We've got pretty much nothing besides a backdoor flush draw and surprisingly action checks all the way around. So pretty passive action here on the flop. Going still to a turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. So improved to our backdoor flush draw. We do have some life here in this hand. And surprisingly, action checks around again. So still five ways. We're off to the river, which is the three of diamonds. There it is. Bink City improved to the 10 high flush. Got to expect our hand to be good here when everyone checks it flop and turn. But now Mariano first to act bets out $80. I think we can go either way with being cautious considering it's a paired board and just calling or raising and you know i always love putting more money in the middle here got to think our hand is good and i'm going to raise it up to the larger sizing i size up to 300 dollars just in case somehow he has slow played trip queens but action quickly folds around to him and mario doesn't even take too long before thinking things over and flashes us the four five of diamonds and tosses them into the muck. How this man folds a five high flush that quickly and that easily to one raise is just mind boggling, but good for you, man. Nice fold, he got away from it. In the spot after that, things get a little dicey. We pick up pocket jacks in the small blind. There is a $20 under the gun straddle and there are three players who limp the 20. We're definitely not going to be limping and calling 20 bucks here in the small blind and I decided to raise it up to $125. Action central here on this table as the Unleon player calls and two of the limpers call as well. So in this 5, 10, 20 straddled pot, things are going to get pretty big. Let's go see a flop. Four ways of the flop comes 10, 7, 3, all spades. So we do have the overpair and the jack of spades. But never loving monotone boards, I decided to just see bet $140. See what develops with a small bet and out of position. We're definitely going to be down betting with our overpair. And we get the unknown player to call. And the other limper makes the call as well. This one specific limper covers the entire table with over $4,000 in stack. So he's got a pretty big stack. We're off to a turn which comes another 10. 
when the top card pairs the board pretty disgusting given the action as it's really likely someone's got to have trips here so i'm just going to check this one as i think this 10 card helps our opponents more than me now it does seem to help the unbegun player because he decides to ship his entire stack in and it's 705 dollars total the other limper goes deep into the tank so he's thinking for about a minute or two, or three, or four, or five. And while he's thinking, I'm pretty sure I think I have to call if this player folds, and I fold if the Unmigun player calls. If somehow our pocket jacks is good against a flush draw, or we have the jack of spades as an out most of the time, I think if this Unmigun player folds, our pocket jacks can be good here sometimes against some flush draws like the ace or king of spades, or if this player has a 10 or something like that, we have a jack of spades for an out as well. But after some time and he thinks about it, he arrives at a decision. He ends up making the call for 705. Now just gotta stick to the plan. I don't take too long before just letting my cards go and fold, but at least we get to see a run out and see who wins this hand. The river comes in consequential nine of hearts and the only one player shows us king 10 of clubs for trips the other player who called folds, and we avoid a disaster, I guess. But unlucky to see that turn card, but uh, gotta give a shout out to that guy who called the 705, because if he was folding, I was calling, and this player was just gonna get paid regardless. In the next spot, we pick up pocket jacks once again. We're in plus one, and our buddy Mariano in the only gun position is on the straddle. So I'm gonna raise it up here first to act to $60. We get the cutoff to make the call and Mariano comes along for a call as well. Going to a flop three ways, which comes three, four, six, two diamonds and a heart. Mariano decides to dock out $75 on this board after saying pre-flop that he just might dock out on the flop. Uh, so given that dynamic, we have an overpair. This board is a little scary as it will never really hit us too often. I make the call and the other player folds, so we're now we're going heads up. When the turn comes, the queen of hearts, we've got the backdoor flush draw. He once again leads for aggression and bets out $250. Although the queen is another card over our pair, this doesn't change the dynamics of the board too much. Although it does bring in another flush draw, I still think we're bluff catching against what he's representing right now, which could be sets, two pairs, straights, all of that fun stuff that beat one pair. But for 250 and knowing he's capable of bluffing a lot in this spot, I make the call and we're off to a river. The river comes the six of hearts. The backdoor flush draw completes, so I'm not too worried about hearts. And also with the board pairing, pretty good river as it eliminates some sets and some two pair combos and we have the best two pair combo essentially. But when Mariano barrels out for another $600, I think in my mind it's a pretty easy decision. If he has pocket fours, pocket threes, or a flop straight, so be it. But we're gonna have to be in there. I make the call, and he shows us Jack 10 offsuit. So thank you for the punt, Mariano. I appreciate you. Thanks for the support on the channel. And I guess Mariano also wanted a shout out on the channel, so this is your advertising fee. As I'm racking up my chips after the session ended, we talked about the hand after and there is a plot twist to this hand. He told me that the front door heart draw got there on the river and I had the hand completely wrong when he looked at my phone and my notes. So it turns out after checking the tape and zooming in on the board, he was correct. The front door flush actually got there instead of the back door flush. So somehow, some way in the moment, I had the hand totally wrong and completely backwards. The river card would have actually completed the front door flush, which makes his bet seem a lot more legitimate and my call a lot less legitimate. And well, turns out I made the call by misreading the board. Who's the real doc now it seems? Still me, but at least we have extra chips. The very next deal, we pick up King-10 offsuit, we're in the Ungun straddle, and it action folds to Mariano in the big blinds. So it looks like he wants to be in a world of more pain, back-to-back -back hands. He decides to raise it up to $65. I have a very playable hand, and we're in position, blind versus blind, essentially. I make the call. Going to a flop of King-4-7 rainbow, he throws out a bet of $40. We've got top pair, got a marginal kicker, but going with it, I make the call. 
The turn is a three. He checks now, and I decide to just play this a little bit tricky, more deceptive. I check this one back with top hair, hoping he'll continue to bluff at it as it seems like he has air. When the river comes a jack, he checks for another time and definitely going to have to bet something to get money out of him. I bet at $150, hoping he can bluff catch with anything, but he quickly folds and will take it down once again, beating Mariano two hands in a row. All right, here, wrapping up the session uh, with our boy Mariano, feeling very generous today, it seems, huh? <laughs> You've done a lot for me, man. Yeah. I'm trying to give back to the right. community. Appreciate it. I'm not the only one who punts, right? <laughs> uh, hanging out outside like the Hustler Live um, table with like the whole setup and everything. Yeah. I don't know if you guys see it so well, but it looks really, really cool. Yeah. Um, final numbers. I have no idea, but how did you do? I feel like you uh, did pretty well. I won like a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's pretty good. Could have been a little more, but. Look at this. This thing's massive. <laughs> Big ass green thousand dollar chip. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, you did great too. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it was pretty slow. This is my chip stack. End of the day, we are in the game for 2600 out for however much this is. We'll have the ticker somewhere on the screen. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching the video. Um, love this place. They're so open, super open to filming and all that fun stuff. So uh, might be here whenever I come back to LA. Yeah. But thanks so much for watching Don't the video. Don't forget to like and comment and fucking subscribe. Yeah. 100K, road to 100K. Let's go. All right, see you next time. Peace.